Journal. I'm Jared Toth, and today um, I'm going to try to make, I, I think, like a vase. I got this log here uh, a few months back, and it's actually kind of green still. Um, I'm not sure what type of wood it is, but it was in a friend of mine's front yard, and it was kind of dying, and um, she ended up having it chopped down, but she noticed that parts of it were um, like trying to make a comeback. Most likely the whole thing was going to end up dying anyways. It struggled for years. So um, she ended up chopping it down, but when she saw that there were still parts that were trying to grow, she kind of felt uh, guilty about it a little bit. So I told her that I would take a piece of it and uh, try to make it into something beautiful so it wasn't a total loss. Um, you know, for the tree. Uh, anyway, so I have an idea of what I want to do, um, and it's going to involve some acrylic and this because there's a. I, I cut it and I trimmed it, so you can see it's kind of a lighter wood. Um, but I trimmed it a couple days ago, and it's starting to crack again. So it's extremely hot here. It's been hitting uh, uh, about 110 and. It's obviously really dry in uh, Las Vegas, so it's kind of drying faster than it should, but I'm hoping the acrylic will kind of help it. Um, this may work, this may not work, it may separate from the acrylic, I, I don't know. Uh, but I have an idea of what I want to do, I've had it for a while and I want to try it, and this seems like a, a good piece of wood to try it on. So I'm just going to get it cleaned up really fast, uh, get it rounded out, and uh, get this bark off of it and then we will go from there. Go ahead and I'm going to start with the roughing gouge. I have it turned up a bit, little bit now. I'm gonna use my skew. Okay, this looks pretty good. Um, I don't mind this crack because my next step, what I want to do is I'm actually going to take, and where this is cracked right here, I'm going to take this to the bandsaw and I'm going to kind of cut it in a diagonal. And uh, that's the part that's going to be filled with acrylic. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if this works. Uh, that's my idea. Um, in my head it's awesome, but we'll see how it ends up turning out. So next, let's go to the bandsaw. So there's the crack. So I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna cut it on this line and I want to kind of turn it and curve it a little bit. Um, but I'm gonna come down the line and uh, it's gonna be part wood, part acrylic. And Turning it's going to be kind of difficult. Uh, I have a one inch blade on here, so I, I kind of got to gradually do it. Um, but a uh, one inch blade is absolutely awesome when you are ripping logs and you want straight uh, lines with it. You know, uh, cutting uh, big, um, you know, stock logs there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to kind of freehand this and uh, cut it. And we'll see what happens from there. So 
So I think that actually came out perfect. Uh, it has a nice curve to it and uh, that part will be filled with acrylic and we'll shape it from there. Um, I really like, I think that that will be good on how uh, that came out. Uh, so next we need to mix up some acrylic and get this thing wrapped so we can pour it and uh, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet. I have a couple ideas. So uh, we'll be doing that next. All right, so what I decided to do was, I went and got a piece of this foam. Um, I had it lying around my garage. It's actually just a piece of insulation. And I just cut probably like a two inch wide strip out of here and it's already an inch thick. So I thought this would be perfect to, to basically do what I needed to do. I went ahead, I threw it in the middle here. I laid it flat and it's probably only goes about that far. I just need it to hold it steady. Um, I put a little dabs of glue in there to hold it. And then I completely wrapped this as much as I could with packaging tape. I probably have three layers going all the way around it um, just to make sure nothing leaks out. Uh, you know, the stuff is pretty expensive so I want to make sure that none of it's wasted and I don't have to keep on trying to pour it in there or it's running and getting all over my stuff. So. Um, so that was kind of how I did. I didn't bore you with uh, doing it because all it was literally was wrapping this all the way around tight. And um, I mean, you, you could do that. It wasn't really that hard. Uh, next, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to use the acrylic that I always use. Um, there will be a link below if, you, if you're looking for it. I, I've always used this. I've used uh, another brand before and I did not care for it. It was kind of, um, I did everything. I used it all the way until it was done but it came out gummy and whatnot. This comes out really nice. This is like real hard acrylic. I, I recommend it. Um, and I don't think it's that pricey. Um, I also got uh, some dyes. I got a black dye. I got a yellow. I got a red. And I got a white acrylic uh, coloring. It's a, a paint, basically. This one won't be see-through, but if I only put so much of these dyes in the um, acrylic that we're using, it's going to be tr uh, translucent basically. I don't want you to be able to see through it clear, but I want it kind of a darker color, but you could tell that you could see through it a little bit. And then I don't mind the white you can't see through. And how this is working out in my head, it's, it's going to be basically swirls and waves and I don't mind if it looks like white suspended in there and there's different colors. So. We'll see, uh, these are the colors I picked. I thought that they would complement the wood. Uh, we'll see, you know. Uh, uh, next thing I did, so we gotta mix that up. We gotta make the acrylic. I also have a chamber pot now, or a vacuum chamber. And I have a video from years ago where people wrote me about a bowl I did with wood chips and acrylic and there was bubbles in it and people gave me all types of suggestions and advice. And they kept on saying, oh, you have to use a torch. The torch did not work when I used it. Uh, I, it momentarily works. And then um, if there's too much oxygen in there, you're still going to end up getting bubbles. When you walk away just from the chemical reaction of the heat and everything else, um, overnight bubbles appeared. So I don't mind how the bowl came out, but people kept on writing me. So I got sick, uh, sick of hearing it. I ordered this online. Um, I, I've only tested it. I haven't done acrylic or anything with it. I only tested it just to make sure it worked. I literally just got this. Um, I'll put a link for this. Uh, if, if I like it, uh, you know, if I don't like it, don't look for the uh, link. But I'm assuming I'm going to like it. Uh, I actually, I went online and I looked for the most popular one and uh, just a vacuum chamber and that's what I bought. I wanted the uh, three gallon, the largest one I could find and I wanted the most popular one and this had great reviews. So I got this one and then I went ahead and I bought a, um, it's a one stage three and a half uh, CFM uh, pump. Uh, I bought the one that they recommended with this. So, um, so we'll go, uh, we'll get started and uh, Hopefully it doesn't leak and this all works out. So it's equal parts. Am 
about to do the black first because I think I need more black than anything. It's not coming out like drops, so I'm gonna have to come close. I'm gonna have to go by look on this. Now I should not need as much of the other colors. Okay, now we're going to put this in the vacuum chamber, suck out all the oxygen, and we're going to mix them. I'm going to go ahead and get the vacuum chamber set up, and then we'll get that started. Okay, basically, I'm ready to pour it in here. I'm going to start with some black. Then I'm going to go red. I'm going to go white. Yellow, or all of it. White. Now it's either going to all swirl and look horrible, or it's going to look cool.
Okay. Now I'm going to keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't drip or leak anywhere, and uh, we'll come back in a couple days and uh, check on it. Okay, I just wanted to trim off the uh, foam on there a little bit. And I have to say that the tape, the packaging tape, actually held really, really well. I'm uh, surprised. And the only reason it probably didn't, it leaked maybe in just a few areas, and this is literally all that leaked. It didn't keep oozing out everywhere. It kind of got to this point and stopped. So I was pretty impressed, and I actually think it was my fault because I think there was some areas that were overlapping and, and they weren't overlapping enough. Um, but overall it worked. I mean, uh, it's completely full. I did not really waste hardly anything. Um, so that being said, I wanted to trim off that piece rather than sitting here trying to get this foam off and everything else. I figured take off a half an inch and now we can get this mounted back up on the lathe and turn it back down to a spear is the overall goal. The most difficult part is probably going to be trying to line this thing back up. But I could kind of tell where the center is. I could tell where I had it on this end. Um, it's filled. And I just want to point out, man, this is going to look beautiful. Look at all the swirl and stuff. I'm hoping it goes all the way down like that. Um, you never know. It may not work, but on top here, it looks awesome. So let's go and uh, I'm going to go get this mounted up on, uh, on the lathe, and then we'll turn this down. Okay, I have it mounted up. It actually wasn't that bad. I just found the center of the part I just cut. I saw where I mounted it last time. Um, and you can see this is going to be wobbly. I have it on the lowest setting, and I'm going to take my... Uh, the only way I can see doing this is taking my half inch bowl gouge and starting to trim this off to try to balance it out. And then as it starts getting balanced, we'll, we'll start turning the speed up. Um, but, you know, right now it's kind of extremely dangerous. I still have masking tape or I uh, still have uh, packaging tape that uh, I couldn't quite get off. I mean, I ripped some of it off so it's wood, but uh, a lot of it's still stuck to the, uh, to the acrylic. So I'm getting my face shield on and my mask, my respiratory mask, and uh, I'm going to start this. Okay, I, uh, I got it pretty well rounded out. I could turn up the speed. Now I'm going to kind of square this end off here and I'm going to uh, put a tenon down. This is gonna be the bottom right here. So I'll put a little tenon and then we're gonna start shaping it. more secure I turned it up just one more speed so it's going pretty good I just want to start shaping it though 
I use my bull gouge and start uh, a higher speed. I'm going to get finer cuts with it. So. So just so you know what I have going on, this is the base. This will be extra. We could get rid of it and do something else with it, but it's going to go in and then just a little bit of a lip coming out. So that's what I'm building right now. sharpen my tools um, again and then I just took this to the bandsaw really fast um, I didn't see the need to show you to do that I just kind of ripped it across and gave myself plenty of extra no way am I do I need this amount um, but I want enough to play with so I'm gonna start smoothing out and shaping this this center here and uh, and then we'll we'll trim that off I sanded and polished this outside and it's looking really good this is all shining but as I got to this I noticed it is like peeling away 
I think some of the foam, the insulation reacted with this, and this whole top has been giving me nothing but problems to begin with, but it's still soft. And this thing has been actually, um, you wouldn't know from the video, but it's actually been curing for a couple weeks. Um, I started the project and I had it sitting here. So now I'm actually gonna take that, this whole thing off. It's not coming out right. For some reason it's still soft. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove it really fast right now and it's just gonna be a flat opening. not exactly what I wanted but it's still gonna look pretty awesome stabilize it there with some CA glue let it sit then I'm gonna sand it I'll sand it down and then kind of just refinish it a little bit and then uh, I'll apply some uh, tongue oil and um, maybe some shine juice to this, and then I'll start uh, hollowing the inside. All right, I just applied a few coats of the Formby's uh, High Gloss Tongue Oil, and then I applied a few coats of uh, shine juice, and uh, now we have a, a high gloss finish on here. If you wanna see how I get my perfect finish, um, check out my other video where it's about uh, getting a perfect finish. So now I'm set up with the Carter uh, hollowing tool, and I'm gonna, the hollowing system, and I'm gonna basically uh, try to hollow this out. Um, I didn't leave myself a very wide open, so it's, it's gonna be, uh, it's, you know, it's gonna be interesting. So usually I have a little bit of a wider opening, but I, I want this one smaller. So next uh, we'll be doing that really fast. to uh, take out of here and I'm basically just doing it all on feel and I'm starting at the, the top and I'm trying to hollow out this and I'm working my way all the way down but it's gonna take me some time and then uh, I'll use my calipers here to check the depths to make sure that I'm pretty even along the whole thing but it's gonna take me a while because uh, you know, I don't have a, a big gap there and it's filling up a lot so I need to keep stopping and blowing it out. So I'm gonna keep on going with the system and then um, when we come back, uh, it'll be hollowed out and we'll worry about taking off the tenon. All right, well, this was not a success. Uh, I kept on using my calipers to check the depths of the walls and I knew that there was a section that was uh, getting pretty thin, but I thought I was still okay. And I thought I was working another section further down, but I think I dragged it across too many times and I just went a little too thin and didn't want to hold it anymore. So, what was going to be a pretty awesome uh, project is uh, ruined. But there's a couple things, this was a good learning experience. There's a couple things that I would do differently. Um, uh, how I poured in the acrylics, um, I, I don't think I need that many colors. I, I would have not done the yellow. Uh, you can't see it anymore. I think it still came out pretty cool. You know, all the, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but all the colors and everything in there. But um, it was still, I still think it's a good idea and I'm not going to give up on this project. Uh, I'm going to try to do it again. Um, 
Next video I'm going to do is going to be a uh, bowl done out of this same wood uh, for the for the for the friend that gave me the uh, piece of wood to do this with. You know, it's unfortunate. I was kind of excited about how this was coming together, um, but nothing was really. Uh, it didn't want to cooperate from the get-go. I also, next time around, I would probably uh, use a drier piece of wood. Obviously, you know, it's going to dry and warp. I thought here being Ve in Vegas, it, it dried enough, but. It still wanted to uh, separate. As I was hollowing, I could see that it's like separating the acrylic from the wood. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate, but what are you gonna do? Um, I'm going to, uh, just in case you want to attempt this, I'm gonna, uh, down below, as always, I'm going to have uh, some links to some of the material. Um, if you're looking for any of the material that I used, uh, anything I could find, I'll have down below so it's easy for you to find online. Um, please join, uh, uh, you know, uh, if you're not a subscriber, even though this was a fail, <laughs> um, you know, learn from my mistakes here and uh, subscribe. I got plenty more videos coming, plenty of more uh, great ideas. And um, I have a, uh, a Facebook um, group. If uh, any of you are interested, it's a great group. Everyone shares their work and, and uh, asks questions and, and kind of, it's great for people learning about uh, wood turning or anybody that's interested, uh, uh, you know, maybe starting a uh, wood turn. It's just a great group uh, for everyone to share ideas and uh, share their experiences. So check that out. It's Wood Turner's Journal on uh, Facebook. There's also a link below this uh, if you're interested in that. And, um, and that's all I got. Uh, thank you for watching. Sorry this one did not work out, but sometimes this happens. Uh, I promise the next one will. And um, thanks again.